let us lift our right hands to Jesus. And I'm going to pray this prayer. And the prayer is that, Lord, over my life, over my children, I will not be guilty. I, I appreciate the Yoruba interpretation of that prayer so much that says that, Lori Omo, Lori Ayemi Mioni Jebi, over my life, over the lives of my children, I will not be guilty. Can you go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus? Pray to God that over my life, over my destiny, over the lives of my children, I will not be guilty. I will not be guilty. In the name of Jesus, I will not be guilty. Lord, you know my beginning, you know my ending. Help me to live to the fullest of life. Help me, Jesus, to live to the fullest of life. Help my children to live to the fullest of life. Help me to help them to live to the fullest of life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Lord, as we have said into your ears this morning, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will answer us in the name of Jesus. We pray. When our works on earth will be tested, in the name of Jesus, we shall not be guilty in the name of Jesus. Our children will not look into our, into our eyes and they will never tell us, I regret coming to the world through you. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Our testimony will never be, I wish I had known earlier maybe my life and the life of my children will have been better that will not be our portion in the name of jesus what we are supposed to know part time the holy spirit himself will teach us in the name of jesus when they are counting the number of people who have fulfilled destiny on earth our names will not be found wanting in the name of jesus father as we go into your word say talk Pray, Lord Jesus, the life in this world will come unto us in the name of Jesus. This will not only be to inform, it will be to transform in the name of Jesus. We step aside, Father. Take your place in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Can we celebrate Jesus, everyone? Greet our neighbors, our right and left. Say good morning, sir. One more time. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma. Just can we take our seat? God bless us. Thank you very much. I want to appreciate God for this rare privilege. It's a rare privilege indeed. And I want to celebrate my father and my mommy for giving us the opportunity and then allowing uh, youth to have their place. You know, it is not very common for you to have pastors leaders who are not threatened by the growth of their youth so many pastors find it difficult to share their with their youth because they don't want them to take over but when you see pastors who doesn't really bother about how their youth improves you should celebrate so please can we celebrate our father and mother in the lord for the opportunity and every of our fathers and mothers here the pastorate is appreciate you and my leaders in the house thank you very much for this opportunity the lord bless us in the name of jesus and i would like us to move straight to business and um what i've come to do this morning is um it is it's a very crucial thing and critical thing in the life of parents and children by the grace of God, my name is Adenio Oluwashio Michael. I am a teacher by calling. I'm a teacher by profession. I am a public speaker and I'm a music minister by grace. So, the aspect we are going to be looking at this morning has to do with um, career, has to do with um, parents helping their children, their teens, or guidance helping their, 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 their folks to knowing what they're supposed to do in life so it's going to be a career talk as it were and i would like to draw 
my reference point from the scripture in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And I would like us to please we'll read together. Because every of my reference point will be from the scripture. A bulk of them will be from the scripture. And um, I'd like us to read it together. To lay a foundation. Luke chapter 2. We're going to be reading first from verse 18 to 22. And from 33 to 35. Then finally 41 to 52. Because of our time, please permit me to read from here. Luke chapter 2, verses 18 to 22. 33 to 35. And 41 to 52. I'm reading from NKJV. Verse 18 to 22. And all those who heard marvel at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told them. It's 21. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. I'd like us to note that verse 18 and 22 as, and, and 21 as parents. Verse 22. Now when the days of our purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Then for verse 33 to 35 now. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. I'd like us to know that verse 34 too. Very well. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The last section is 41 to 52. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers both listening to them and asking them questions 47 and all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers so when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said to them son why have you done this to us look your father and i sought you anxiously and he said to them why did you seek me did you not know that i must be about my father's business verse 15 but they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. I like us to know that verse 51 too. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor, in favor with men and with God. The Lord blessed the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to start first by talking about heart truths. As far as school is, is concerned in Nigeria, hard truth as far as school is concerned. By the grace of God, I was 17 when I started teaching. When I was 18, I was lucky and privileged and, and graced by God to get admission into school. And at that time, when I was preparing to get admission at 17, I was, I just finished secondary school, and I was teaching those who are preparing to write GC and WAEC. That's very funny. But that was the condition I, I found myself, by the grace of God. When I got admission into school, for my first degree, by the grace of God, I was into tutorials. So at honor level, I was teaching honor level students. At honor level, I was teaching those who wanted to write post-jam. We're doing tutorials. Those of us that 
uh, uh, have been there know what I'm talking about. So I can say boldly that I've tasted of both the tertiary education and secondary education. It's only primary education I have not, I've not tasted. I've not taught in primary school. Yes, because I'm not very patient as a teacher. Praise God. <laughs> because if you, if, you, if you must teach successfully in a primary session, you must be patient. Not only patient as a moral, patient as a fruit of the Spirit. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. All right. So, presently, uh, I teach in a secondary education and, and trusting God that it, it will move to a tertiary uh, uh, level in the name of Jesus. Thank you for saying amen. So, I want to just say that I've tasted of all the sections apart from primary session. So I can say a little bit about what school is. Especially considering Nigeria as a case study. Number one truth, our truth about school in Nigeria is that thinking going to school is an escape route of poverty is ridiculous. Thinking going to school is an escape route for poverty in Nigeria is a waste of time. Maybe in those days, I was not born in those days, but our fathers in those days can actually testify. In those days, going to school might be an escape route to an extent, because you know that if you're a graduate, you, you get a bean tooth car, if I'm, if, if, if I'm not making a mistake, or, or you mess this best car, praise God, and you have an amount that comes to your account as a graduate. And besides, because in a university, a, a university can graduate maybe not more than 200 candidates in a year. And before you know it, you start seeing companies coming to take them one after the other. So it's easier for people at that time to get a job after going to school. But considering when I was graduating, first degree, my school graduated 12,000 people. If I'm not mistaken. When I, when I got to NYC, 12,000 from different local universities. At least 12,000. Now we have over hundreds of thousand core members graduated, sworn in as, as a core member. And after the 11 months or 12 months of compulsory service to your fatherland, they all get released into the same population. Hey? The question is, who will give them the job? And that's why thinking in this dispensation that going to school is your escape route, is your escape is a waste of time number two hard truth about school is that being at the top academically does not necessarily guarantee that you'll be at the top of life graduates can actually bear witness to this We've seen first class people, we've seen great guys. In fact, this is not then say we've I've seen first class roaming around the street. Though some people will, will say that ah, I ain't she, <laughs> but it's more than that. Being at the top academically doesn't necessarily guarantee that you'll be at the top of life. That's very important. Number three is that life requires more than the ability to understand a concept, memorize the concept, and reproduce it in an exam. Life requires more than the ability to understand a concept, memorize a concept, and reproduce a concept in an exam. It is not chemistry formula that will withdraw money from bank. NACL plus uh, H2O is not what you take to bank and get to the cashier. Or telling them about the physiology of human body and start telling them everything is not what will withdraw money from bank. If you get there, what the bankers will just tell you is do you have the necessary things to withdraw money? So it is not those things you were taught in class that will necessarily bring money to your pocket. It is how you make use of them. We have seen PhD holders struggling. So don't limit yourself to the classroom. You should rather make the world your classroom. Do not limit yourself to the four walls of the classroom, but you rather make the world your classroom. So life is beyond going to school. Life is about educating yourself. 
So there's a big difference between education and schooling. There are two different things. Going to school and being educated. Maybe I should shock us with this. It is not everybody that actually goes to school that is educated. <laughs> Praise God. So going to school and being educated are two different things. Two different things. Before Big Gate went back to school to complete his, his education, he left school. He made it before going back. So don't ever say that Big Gate did not go to school. He, he still went to complete his school. I was watching a movie of Mark Zuckerberg. For the past two months now, the gate has been, has been uh, uh, um, displaced from his number one position as the richest man on earth. In case you don't know, the owner of Amazon is not the richest man present. And by the grace of God, Mark Zuckerberg is now the youngest, anyway, it has been like two or three years ago, but now he has moved a bit closer now he's now number three. I was watching a movie about him. And he also left school. He was trying to break into a program in school. He was trying to hack when he was caught. And he was asked to leave school. But when he left school, he already had Facebook in 12 different tertiary institutions as a dropout. Because he started from there. He started having Facebook in institutions before he became viral. So it was after he had had like 12 Universities that are already living on Facebook as the only social media platform before he went back to school to complete his education. He actually went back. But he already knew where he was going. Praise the living Jesus. So, educating yourself is getting the required knowledge for your God given assignment. It's different from going to school. Educating yourself is getting the required knowledge for God's giving assignment. So if God's giving assignment requires you to go to studio to learn, that is your education. Going to school only gives you a platform to be a better musician. Praise the living Jesus. If becoming a world-class uh, uh, fashion designer is God's assignment for you. Going to school will not make you a perfect fashion designer. Going to learn how to design clothes is what brings you the education. Going to school gives you a leverage above others. So you can go to school and not be educated in God's giving assignment. That's why some people are actually schooled but they are struggling. I have met people that their English is like Queen's English. But that English could, could not produce money for them. I've met a man who can, who can teach almost, I think, maybe 10 or 12 subjects without taking notebook. 12 subjects without taking notebook. It was so brilliant, but there was nothing to show for it. We have seen medical doctors who are on 40,000 era payroll. I've seen more than one. We have seen, we have seen people who graduated from law school who are on 15,000 payroll. 15,000 law school. They are looking for uh, landlords that will come and, come and drive their tenants out of the house to call them and give them job. And how do you expect a landlord that his tenant cannot pay? How do you expect him to pay you as a lawyer? Educating yourself is getting the required knowledge in fulfilling God's giving assignment. Going to school gives you a leverage and a platform that differentiates you and makes you a world class. So if you sacrifice all your efforts on going to school without getting the required knowledge, you will end up as a frustrated literate. A frustrated literate. And you know what? So many people think 
Ah, because it is first degree, let me go for second degree. Ah, maybe because the second degree, and we are going to let me go for another degree. Ah, now I have a simple with six degrees. In fact, recently, by the grace of God, I'm in charge of the uh, uh, the CBT center of my of, of my place of work, and I've had people come to me for counseling about courses and things like that. There was one who, uh, man that I, I met. The man is about 36 or 37. He has four degrees. Four. And, he wo- and he's still coming for DEA. And I said, sir, I'm a business, sir. I was supposed to register him for D. Kilo shele. I will learn you. Learn with a We did it. Learn you. Learn you. Go go load. I'm so pretty. Ah. Hey. Hey. Me only bad one. No, after for at 36, 37, I look at the shoe. I pitied him. I, I'm not mocking him, but I pitied him. If at 36, 37, you still want to go back to school to study law after having four degrees, eh? Shogunlaye, shogunlaye. So we think that so many people think it is the, es- the only escapade is to go to school. No, no. Have you ever heard? Ali Kodangote talked about his ag- academic uh, 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 qualification. You don't hear. You will never hear. I look at the women. I, was, I took my time around last month to look at the women that are in the first hundred richest people in the world. There is a woman that is, is, that's one of the first 20. A woman. Yes, ma. Thank you, ma. And I look at this woman. These are people that they are not in the education or academic se- no, sector as it were. Though some of them are actually be working there or have, that have worked there. But there are people with investment, there are people that they know what they, ha- they, they, they need and they went for it. They went for it. I'm not saying that life should be judged by how rich you are. No, 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 no. It's not that. But if you are really fulfilling purpose, you should not be struggling. I'm not saying that by the number of cars you have, by the number of assets you have, that shows that you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are fulfilling purpose or anything. No, 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 no. It's not about that. It's about that the robbers too should be fulfilling purpose. I'm robbers should be fulfilling purpose. Because they have cars, they have them. Yahoo guys should be fulfilling purpose because they have them. But it's not about that. But I'm saying categorically, like if you are truly in purpose, you might not have gotten there yet, but you will not struggle. Because of our time, I need to move. Thank you. Okay. Now, so going to school is only a means to an end. It is never an end itself. Going to school is only a means to an end. It is never an end itself. So it will therefore be disastrous for any parent to think or believe that as long as I can send my child to the best school, he will get the best out of life. To be disastrous. Thinking that as long as I send my child to the best school, he or she will get the best out of life and ultimately fulfill her purpose or his purpose. No. So what am I saying here is that as parents seated, we have a unique role to play in ensuring that our children fulfill purpose and they choose the right career in life. In Psalms chapter 127, verse 3, the Bible says that children are the heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Verse 4 says that like arrows are in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. It said, blessed are those that his quiver is full of them. So one of the major gifts that you, must, you will give account of as a parent is the gift of God. That God has given you in form of your children. If you cannot, at the end of your life, stand before God to explain how you have helped your children, then you are a total failure as a parent. We want to give the society, we want to give the school to do what we are supposed to do. But that's not possible. There's a role the school will play, there's a role you must play as a parent in ensuring that your children will pick the right career and fulfill purpose in life. 
So quickly, my attention is on parents because not many of the teenagers are here. But we can help them. If I wish to be the one to help them. I'll be talking about the influence and the role of parents in the choice of career for their children. What's the influence or role of parents in the choice of career for their children? I've established the fact that it is not about school alone. They need to be educated. What form of education? How do you know the form of education your child should go through? Maybe by the time we end this discussion, we're going to understand what I'm talking about. Now, the influence or role of parents in the choice of career for their teens, or for their children. Before I go into that, let me tell us common errors made by parents in the choice of career. Common errors. Number one, so many parents want their children to make up for their failures. I wanted to study medicine. I end up doing microbiology. Life is not fair. But no problem. I know where I can get what I want back. My firstborn must study medicine. If he doesn't study medicine, I will, I will disown him. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the education sector and I know what some parents say. You hear some parents say some things, you, you, instead of praying for the child, you'll be praying for the parent. <laughs> you hear some parents say some things, you will not, you will not bother about the child again. Let's deal with this one first. You hear some parents say some nasty things. And they will tell you, share in Lebini. <laughs> and when the parent is telling you, share in Lebini, you better keep your mouth shut. Because if you are not careful, the lesson that will come out is slap. She will be. One of the errors so many parents make is that what I could not do, my child must do it. If I could not study law, my child must be a lawyer. I wish they could, they could be saying that in the, in the pastoral uh, perspective too. I, I wish you become a pastor. God did not call me. I flash God, flash God. God did not even call back. No problem. But if I can't become a pastor, my child must become a pastor. If that is the case, that would be better. <laughs> Praise God. I could not study engineering. I could not study this course. You must do it. If you don't do it, you are in trouble. I remember then too. Because they saw me in our immediate family. I mean immediate family. Going to the first extended family. There was nobody who actually did medical related course. And they saw a young me who they think, ah, this guy has potential. I think it's, it's okay. Let him go and do medicine. And before I knew it, I heard both the big daddy and the small daddy and the other daddy saying, you are doing medicine. 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 Must I do medicine? <laughs> you must do medicine. You must. Some parents have pressurized their children. And they will not tell them because they want to make up for the failures they had. Number two. Some common errors some parents make in the choice of career for their children is that they want to prove a point. They want to prove a point to the whole world. Ah, oh, Mamini. Emini, I am the father of the MD of this and this. You don't know me. Ah, ah. Ko easy. That's the train of the medical doctor. Ah, ah. Kilo, sorry. So easy. Go easy, that's the children of Monko, the barista. Oh, understand? They want to prove a point to the world as if they are in a competition. Or maybe they went to a place and one of their friends told them, ah, she don't think she meant something. That your one is 200 level. On she law. Um, Bukola one is 300 level. On she economics. And they go home and say, what? What? You really want to be why? Colony, medicine, kilo, kidney, kilo, for the Praise God. They just want to prove a point. So that when they go out there, they can stand tall, their shoulders tall. It's as if life is about the profession. They've forgotten that life is not really about the profession, 
It's about the result you bring out of it. Number three. Some parents want to create a dynasty. D-Y-N-A-S-T-Y. Dynasty. A dynasty in the sense that they are in a field and they want their children to succeed them in that field. Okay. There's two years ago, two years ago, the lady is in, is it two years now? Yeah, last year. That was last year. The lady is in Afe Babalola now. She's doing fine. She wanted to go to Covenant University for architecture. This girl went in her TD. She's the only female in the TD class. And when she draws, when she designs, when she creates, ah, you will bow. Boys in that class bow. So I, I was lucky to, to, to have her as one of my protege. So she came to me and, and said, I'm going for it. I said, of course, you're on the right track. But because an, an architect, fine. I support you. You are good to go. And I counseled her. Long, long after, the father came and said, she's doing civil engineering. I said, ah, sir, civil engineering? Yes. Yes. You can't understand. She's doing civil engineering. What is, the girl cried to me explained to me and said, this is what I love. This is what I want to do. But the man said, it is civil. So one of the teachers who was bold enough went to meet the man and called the man, sir, why civil? He said, thank you. There is a position in NMPC. Is it NMPC now? There is a particular um, corporation, a very big corporation. And there is a slot for me. The rest are in art department. She's the only one in science. She's the one that can fill that void. If she doesn't study civil engineering, she can't occupy that position. Say, sir. So because of, yes, so yes. If I tell you, let, let me shock you. The man I'm talking about is a pastor in RCCG. He's an elder in RCCG in Lagos. And they say because there is a position somewhere, then the child should not pursue her dream. Now the girl is now in it. Maybe struggling. The last time I saw her, look at us. Civil. God is your muzzle. They want to create a dentist. Some, because they have a corporation and they think if my child does not do this, it can't succeed me. Who will I put in charge? You're already teaching the child how to rely on your wealth. Dynasty. Another error. The fear of the child not making it in the same field. The fear of the child not making it in the same field. The fact that you couldn't make it in that field and your child wants to go to that field does not mean that your child too will not make it. I am a teacher. I still want to become a teacher. God forbid, Barton. Hey, your daddy has been in this teaching profession for 25 years. His salary is no more than 150,000. And it's not even consistent, especially when you are in your state. <laughs> Praise God. I said, Laye, Laye. The fact that you did not succeed in that field does not mean that your child will not succeed there. Don't take it personal. It's their life. The way you have your own life to live, they have their own life to live. And they will give account. And of course, you also give account on their behalf. Yours is to guide them, not dictate to them. Don't confuse them. And you know what? Nigerian parents are... Sorry, apologies. I must, I'll also be one soon. In Jesus' name. So when I say Nigerian parents, I'm also tell myself in advance. But for those of us that actually have the right knowledge, we are not part of this. But some Nigerian parents have a way of beating their child, correcting their child without telling them why. Leave that place. Leave that place. You beat the child and the child cries. We never sit them down to tell them why did I ask you to leave that place. So you see the child keep coming to that place. Why did you ask them to leave? My daddy will beat me like heaven on earth if I dare play football. 
if he's silly with football, I'm in trouble. I must, and when I go for competition, those, because then, I don't know why I can't dance anymore now. now. Then I, I could dance very well. So when we go for uh, birthday parties, and that's what my dance, I always take first, and they give me ball. Ball is always part of those things, they always give me ball. And when I take it to myself, ball, ball, not to be one late, ball. My dad, hey. When I do, if he sees me with, with football, I'm in trouble. He never told me why. So I'm not, I, I just left. Maybe I will have become another messy now. <laughs> Praise God. I know that's not possible. But he kept beating me over it. Now, the day will tell me why. It was his confession time. He thought I had, I had grown to a very good level. But he, he didn't know that. There's no time that is too small for a child to know why he's doing a thing. No time. So them reasons. The children we, are, we, we, are, we, we, we give birth to nowadays, they are very sharp. Very smart. If you don't tell them why, they'll find it elsewhere. <laughs> and you might not be so lucky that where they will find the why might be a wrong way, a wrong place. When he told me why he, he doesn't want me to play football, now he's not a lover of football. In fact, he's encouraging our second born to go, and, to go into football. Now. He said, Eche could play. Eh? Eche could play. Jesus. Eche could play. For you that... Because now, you know, boy, football is bringing... I didn't know that he was also once into football. He was a footballer. In fact, it was fo- footballing that got him into where he retired. He retired from um, National Electric Power Authority, then Nepal, now PHCN. So it was footballing that got him into, in, into, into Nepal. So then, you know, our, our fathers there will, 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 will know what I'm talking about. Organizations, corporations will play against themselves. They have a team. They play against themselves. So... Most times it was first of all in water corporation. He was playing one day and they saw that this guy is good. They took him from water corporation, they bought him. And they brought him to Nepal. So he was a good player. He was a skipo. They call him skipo. Very good. I saw those pictures. He brought them out. I said, eh. But he said one day he had injury. And that was the end. So he, he keeps nursing the injury till, till when I knew. Praise God. Because I'm not sure if he's still nursing it. Till when I knew, he kept nursing the injury. So because of that, he said he doesn't want to encourage anybody, his children, to play football. But now he's a dire Chelsea fan, watching Chelsea football and encouraging somebody else to go. Why? Because he knows that there are things in place now. But then, it was not so. So the fact that you, you did not succeed in a field does not mean that your child will not succeed in that field. There are different times. You might have gotten it wrong, your child must have gotten it right. Am I making sense to, to anybody here? You might have gotten it wrong. Your child might have gotten it right. So the fact that you didn't make it in that field does not necessarily mean that your child will not make it in that field. Let me leave there. Because of my time, I have just 10 more minutes or less. Let me say this, that if for the first 12 years of raising your child, you do not have an idea of what he or she is going to become or about becoming, you are a failure as a parent. I say that with all sincerity and with all humility. I'm saying this, it's, it's, it's our truth, but that's just the truth. I can't hide it. If for the first 12 years of raising your child, you do not have an idea of what he or she is going to become, first 12 years, you have failed. Two or three years ago, when I joined where I, I work now, they always bring people from outside to come and talk to them on career, motivational speakers. They, some will collect 150,000, some 250,000. And there's some people there, somebody like me, they were just looking and say, ah! If I one came sometime, he gave motivational talk, and at the end of the day, he was, at the end of the day, he stood up package with his books, with everything, was 650,000 in just five days. 650,000, 650 in just five days. And I look at myself and say, ah! long so i was lucky last year no, late last year early this year i think my school discovered that there's somebody here who can help us and i'm sure the children must have suggested me so i was opportune to speak to them about their career i wanted to pick their courses for jam so i was asked to speak to them so i was there and the first thing i told them is that all of it that you are sitting here Waiting for me to tell you the course to study, your parents have, have failed you. When I told them, they were, they were, they were, they were surprised. 
He said, all of you sit there, you are waiting for me or waiting for somebody from outside to come and tell you what you should do or the cause you should feel in jam. Then all your parents here with no apology have failed. All of them. If a child is under your custody for 15, 14 years and you cannot categorically say that sweetheart, son, daughter, this is what you should do. Then what have you been doing? Anyway, we are not surprised because some parents are even confused of what they are doing. Some are still in that job because there's no food, there's no money to, 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 to feed the family. That's why some people are still in that job. So a parent who has failed to discover his own purpose or where he's going, how will he help another? You can't give what you don't have. So if as a father, as a mother, you cannot tailor your child in choosing a career appropriately, then something is wrong somewhere. Look at Jesus' story in Luke chapter 2 that we read. They were not struggling. They've heard before time what Jesus was going to become. They knew before time. When they went to look for him and he told them, don't you know I should be in my father's, they understood. At the point, they were confused. But later they understood because they were prophecies. The things they knew, the things they heard. What have you received concerning your children? If God has placed them in your custody, what do you think God will have them do? That's a question every parent must think about. Don't wait for the society to decide for them. There is possibility that they lead them astray. Nobody should know your child better than you. It's a disgrace. How will a teacher tell you and say, do you know that your, your, your boy is, is, is skillful in this, is skillful in that, and you say, eh, I don't know. And you have been under, and he has been under your roof for 15, 14, 13, 12 years. What have you been doing? Chasing after shadows. I told them, all your parents here have failed. And I asked them, how many of you want to do medicine? I saw their hands. Very many. Medicine. I look at them. I teach them, I teach them biology. And I discover many of them that want to do medicine. Sometimes they have 45 over, over, over 100. And I say, you, what, 45 over 100. <laughs> you too want to do medicine. Ah, medicine. I look at them. Medicine indeed. I don't want to study law. Some people cannot construct two sentences well. Two sentences very well. I don't want to study law. They, 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 they say, Look, you should not study law. You. You should, uh, you, uh, you should become a Yoruba broadcaster. You. Study law. Eh? I look at them. Engineering students. Some of them don't know. They don't, they, for them, math is always a threat to them. They hear math, they run away. I don't want to do engineering. The Yemas, they just run away. You know, you should be praying that God help my life. You want to do. These are little, little things that many of them do not actually understand. But where are the parents? Where are the men? Where are the women? I love the story in Judges where even before Samson came, the parents already knew what he was going to become. I love the story of Father Abraham. Even before Isaac came, they already know what Isaac was going to become. Where's the place of the parents in this time, in this dispensation? Are we running after ministry? Running after business? My business must not crumble. Nothing must happen to it. Which other business can be greater than the business of your children? A man of God that has failed at home has failed everywhere. It doesn't matter how, how, how much you succeed in other areas. You, are not, you, you have not fulfilled purpose as a parent, as a guardian, if people that are placed in your custody are not making it well. You're running after money that will fly, that, that have wings that can fly. How will a father be so busy? The mother is so busy. Two of them are busy. People beg us in my school. They beg us even after holiday. Hey, Joya, come on, you drew. After holiday, a, a, a child has been with us for four months. And yet, they are still begging us to let us stay or let him stay in the boarding school. 
araye ni ah araye ni they will be begging us let him stay all the days the, the, the child is already happy to go home and meet his or her parents. you know and the parents come and say please we will pay you they are ready to pay any amount they have the money but they think it's about money what happens to them after they are gone if you are here and they ask your children to name their mentors when they become well in life and you're not one of them you have failed how many of us can categorize say that my parent is a mentor my parent got me to where i am how many of us can say that maybe a few because those parents are not there to take their place you start mentioning some somebody from somewhere who god must have when your parent failed who god must have brought to feed the void of your parents Let's put sentiment apart. Some people, the best thing they have done to us as parents is that they donated their sperm and their egg. Sentiment apart. The best thing some parents have done to their children is that they were able to give us their sperm and their egg that formed the zygote and formed us. Apart from that, there is no impute. It's not only about the school fees or putting food on our table. We want a life of influence our parents. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I'm sorry if I... Okay. Let me just round off. How do, I, how do you help your children to choose a career? Or if you're a teenager, you are here, how do I choose a career? How do you help your children? Or how do I choose a career? If you're a teenager, you are here, or how do you help your children to choose a career? Before I start saying them, there are seven, I'll just list them, there are seven. But before that, I want us to know that total fulfillment comes when your career is in line with your purpose. Total fulfillment comes when your career is in line with your purpose. Don't think you can pursue your, your career and, and, and want to run after purpose at the same time. One will suffer. So you enjoy more because all your energy will be concentrated on one thing. So total female comes when your career is in line with your purpose. I don't have time to explain that. But I know Holy Spirit will, will, will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Number two, do not waste your energy on things that will not bring joy or fulfillment. Please, don't be carried away by money and material possessions. Do not waste your energy on things that will not bring joy or fulfillment. Now, how do I choose a career? Number one is by prayers. You can't remove that. By prayers. As a parent from the womb, Start inquiring of God. What do you want this child to become? Start praying. At day one, at one year old, two year old, start praying. Lord, what have you brought this one to come and do on earth? The same way you pray, Oluwa, ah, Oluwa, go to your mommy, it's okay. Oh, mommy, oh, go, 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 I get in your me. What if you miss a layer? What about it? Miss a jay? Only what shall know me is those guys are good, but much more importantly, Lord, what have you called this child to do? So I can tell all the child towards that. When you pray, it saves your stress, it saves your time, it saves your energy, and the earlier you start praying about it, the better it is for you. So prayers, you can't joke with that. Number two. If you're a teenager, look at the things you do stresslessly that gives you joy. The things you do stresslessly that gives you joy. And as a parent, look at the things those children, what they do stresslessly. And they're happy doing it. Look at them. And they're happy doing it. You ask him, come and do that thing 100 times, he will come. Even without food. And he will be happy. Look at it. It's a way. Number three, look at the subjects you enjoy reading as a teenager and you get rewarded for it. Because some people enjoy reading some subject and, and eventually they don't get rewarded because they're not reading it well or right. But look at the subject that even when you prepare less, you still have more. So that even when you prepare more, you have much more. And you don't stress yourself reading those subjects. Look at them. And please, the fact that a child is brilliant does not mean he must be in science department. Please let us know that the fact that a child is brilliant, the fact that he's brilliant does not mean that he must end up in the science department. No. No. Number four, look at their temperaments. Look at their temperaments. I don't have time to say much on those, but look at their temperaments. 
the choleric, the cholerics, the sanguines, the melancholies, the phlegmatics. Check, write down those, those temperaments. Go and find out about them. Your, the temperament of your child can help you know what the child can do. It can. There are some people that they are talkers, natural talkers. They can talk from now to tomorrow. You know, you have them in your house. You know them. And there are some people that they are analyzers, analyzers, analyzers. They will tell you how it happened from, from 1 to 100. Mommy, you can't imagine what she did. In the morning when you left at 8.45, at 8.47 she came. She went to the, to the, to the, to the port at 8.49. Mommy, I was taking time. They can analyze it. Everything, detail, detail. Even yourself, you are watching film, you are watching film, and somebody comes and says, ah, it was film that to talk about Ah! Don't ask those people questions. They will tell you how the film, even those things that they, they were thinking of doing in that film, they will say it. They are them, they are analyzers. Know them. The talkers, the analyzers, then the debaters, debaters. Hey, this one. Don't tell them, do something, and you don't tell them why you, you are finished. Say, mommy, yeah, go there and say, mommy, why? I said, you should go there, mommy, why? If, if you're watching film, and you, maybe you quote something from the film wrongly, they will tell you, mommy, ah, ah. that was not the way it was said. They can debate. Even if it is wrong, they, can, they will stand on your neck and say, mommy, you are wrong. Ah, the debaters, they can debate anything with their sisters, with their siblings. I have to be very fast. Number four, the thinkers. These ones, they don't talk more, but they think a lot. Many of them are, are melancholics. They don't, they, don't, they don't like talking. If you ask them one question, what they're supposed to say in five sentences, they will summarize it. They will, they will just give you a summary. I say, ah, is that all? Daddy, that is all. The thinkers, they, what they want to do, you see them coming to you and say, maybe you're trying to fix your car. And you're like, Daddy, don't you think it could be this? Even what you could not remember. Or Daddy, don't you think we should check this? Like, where did this guy get this from? The thinkers, note them. No, but next, the destroyers. The destroy. We, we have them at home in our house. We used to have them. The destroyer. Any any tape. Think about it by Jenule. No other person. Think about it by Jenule. You know, you know them. She on low by Ah, Emiko. You want to see me on the long tour? Because she said that that Because she said that that. She only go to. She 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 electric. She she only do nothing. Ah, Daddy, I can do it. The remote control. Even when you have lost hope on the gadget. They bring it to life and say, ah, hello, she remote. She only. Oh, they say, ah, daddy mo go shen only. They are good destroyers and they are good makers. Watch them at home. Do you have them? Am I is anybody bearing me witness here? Do we have them in our houses? Beautiful. Now there are the questionnaires. Hey! This one, don't play. <laughs> Anything you don't have answers to, please don't say it. The question they can ask you, Daddy, what were you and mommy doing in the bedroom for two hours? Daddy. For two hours, and I was hearing noise. What kind of noise are you hearing? They are, <laughs> they are questioning. They can ask you questions. They can ask you, Daddy, when will Jesus come? Ah, why would he not tell us when to come? Ah, no, Daddy. Why won't he tell us? There must be a time. As I, I said, there's no time. Hey, but Daddy, said you don't have an idea. Leave me alone. I don't know. Ah, they are the question. They just want to ask questions. They are there. Praise God. Now, let me go to the, the mathematicians. My time is up. Before they throw me out of here. Now, let, let, me, let me just say, the mathematicians, they are the writers and the lo novel lovers. The writers and the novel lovers. They want to write, they want to read anything readable. Anything they see, even if you don't call them, they want to read. They want to write. And there are some we call, I love these ones. There are not very many at home. And it's common among women. They are the caregivers and sympathizers. The caregivers and sympathizers, anything happens, they'll be crying. It's not their own, no. In the film, somebody is dying, they'll be crying. Are you the one? Is it your film? Is it your character? Why are you crying? And mommy, look at the way they are. Ah, ah. The caregivers, the sympathizers. That's something that when they are killing themselves, even when they are fighting at home, you just be looking at it. They are fighting. Some, you think that the one they are beating, they'll be crying. Who, what happened? Who, who beat you? They didn't beat me. Two people are fighting. And you are crying like this. Are you the one fighting? They are the caregivers and sympathizers. Number four, we have the comedians. On number next, the comedians. This one, there is no dull moment around them. No dull. If the house is dull, it's a problem. They will come to you and say, what, what is going on in this house? 
Mommy, you are not talking. Leave me alone. I don't want to talk. Mommy, talk. You see them trying to bring out comic relief out of everything they see. And uh, finally, that's those we call the creators. I don't have all the time to, to, to uh, tell us what causes. But I know maybe uh, one, one, one of these days, if you have another opportunity, we can take time to broaden on this temperament. Number five, listen to comments and criticisms to choose a career. Listen to comments and criticisms. Number six, monitor your growth and monitor their growth. Monitor your growth. If you're a teenager, you're here. Monitor their growth if you're a parent. And finally, number seven, you pray again. You pray again. Number one, what was number one? You pray. What was number seven? You pray again. Even if when you have clues to what they What I mean, we need to help him. I'm coming back with that story so that he will not stop at that level. If he stop at that level, then our children also will stop at that level. But since we want our children to also grow up, we need to support him. Praise the Lord. So I'm coming back with that. Be preparing your pocket. And God bless you. Shall we clap our hands again for Jesus?